And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to my channel where we talk about anything related to comic books like new releases, stories, writers, artists or video games based on comic books. Today we're gonna talk about the Inheritors who have never appeared in any Spider-Man movie, TV show or video game, so many people don't even know they exist. And I thought I should make a video about them. And yes, I know my last video was over a month ago, I'm never that late and I'm very sorry but I was very busy and had many stuff to do, but now there you have it. The video is finally here and I hope you enjoy it. So with no further ado, let's start. First, I am just going to talk about the creators and the first appearance of each inheritor, so if you're not interested in this part, you can just skip this and go to the next chapter where I talk about their story and who they are. The first member of the inheritors that we ever got to see was Morlun, who first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 2 number 30 in 2001, and was created by J. Michael Straczynski and John Romita Jr., but the existence of a whole clan of Totem Hunters wasn't revealed back then. Then, in 2009, Three inheritors appeared in the book Spider-Man The Darkest Hour by Jim Butcher, but since this is a book and these three inheritors have never appeared anywhere else, it is not considered canon. So, the next inheritor we got to meet was Karn in Superior Spider-Man Vol. 1 No. 32, it was released in 2014, and he was created by Jesus Gage, Dan Slott, and Giuseppe Camuncoli. In the next issue of the same series, Briggs, Bora, Verna, Demos, and Jennings appeared for the first time. Briggs and Bora were also created by Gage, Slot, and Camuncoli, while the rest were created by Jesus Gage and Miguel Sepulveda. Then, in Ends of Spider-Verse Vol. 1 No. 3, appeared two inheritors that we haven't seen since then, Darog and Namura. These two weren't even in the Spider-Verse story, but they are still considered to be inheritors. They were created by Dustin Weaver, who wrote and illustrated the story. There still was one inheritor missing, however, so the team hadn't made a full appearance until Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 3 No. 9 in 2014. That was when the leader, Solus, appeared for the first time, created by Dan Slott and Giuseppe Camoncoli. Its inheritor may have different creators, but the person who first thought of them as a team was Jim Butcher. Since his book isn't canon though, we have to consider Christos Gates as their creator, who wrote the story in which the team's name was revealed, while Miguel Sepulveda illustrated the story. However, I still consider Jim Butcher as the co-creator since he came up with the whole concept. The Inheritors are a team, or more like a clan, of superpowered hunters from Earth-001 uh, or just Earth-1 that can consume the life force of totems. They can sustain themselves on lesser sources for a while, like normal humans or animals, but every so often they must go back to consuming totems. Now, what do I mean with totems? Totems are beings that connect the animal and human kingdoms. For example, Peter Parker is a spider totem, since he is a human being, but he possesses all the abilities of a spider. Are there any other totems besides spider totems though? Well, I'm not sure if Duck Cock could be considered an octopus totem, since his arms are artificial, but Black Panther is a panther totem, and this is actually confirmed by Marvel. So yes, there are other totems too. I wonder if Morbius is a bad totem. Can you imagine it? Morbiverse, it's Morbin time. Anyways, the Inheritor's goal was to defeat the Spider Deity, the Master Weaver. In pursuit of the same, the Inheritor's launched an attack on the Weaver's home. The clan mother and her offspring, Bora, Verna, Briggs, Demos, Morlun, Jennings, and Karn, participated in the attack. When Karn had the opportunity to strike the Weaver, the deity revealed that Karn didn't take pleasure in killing and wished he could create instead of destroying. Karn hesitated and his mother attacked the Weaver, resulting in her death. Solus, Karn's father, arrived on the scene and subjugated the Master Weaver along with Karn's siblings. Karn was forced to wear a mask to hide his aim and became an outcast. The inheritors realized the potential use of the Weaver's power and used chains designed by Genix to harness the Master Weaver's abilities to travel between dimensions and hunt all sp spider totems in the multiverse. And that's how Morlun went to Earth 616 back when JMS was still writing The Amazing Spider-Man. One of the best uh, runs, by the way. After being killed by Spider-Man twice, Morlun started being afraid of him and never attacked him again, but he did appear again a few years later with the rest of his family. That's when they started their great hunt against all the spider totems in the multiverse. 
it seemed like the inheritor's only motive was to eat spiders. In reality, however, their plan was to prevent other spider totems from ever existing, as they threatened their existence, and they could accomplish that with a ritual in which they would sacrifice the Skion, the Bride, and the other. The Skion was Benjamin Parker of Earth 982, the Bride was Silk of Earth 616, and the other was Kane, the clone of Peter Parker of Earth 616. To save themselves and the multiverse, the Spider-Men, Spider-Women, and, well, others, teamed up to defeat the Inheritors. The Inheritors killed many members of the Spider Army, but they couldn't die because even if they did, then their bodies would be cloned immediately and it would be like nothing even happened. To stop that from happening again, an alternate version of Ben Riley, who was still alive, sacrificed himself in order to destroy the cloning facility where the Inheritors were creating new bodies for them. What does that mean? The Inheritors are no longer immortal. If they died, they would die for good, since there wouldn't be any way to clone themselves. So, now that the Inheritors were not immortal, in order to prevent their prophecy, Superior Spider-Man killed the Master Weaver, the person who weaved and maintained the web of life and destiny. With the aid of Karn, an Inheritor who only felt hate for the rest of his family, the Spider Army defeated the Inheritors by trapping them in a universe where the Earth had become an uninhabitable wasteland after a nuclear war. There was, however, a shelter where the Inheritors would be safe from the radiation, but there would be no way to escape. After the Master Weaver's death, Karn took his place, becoming a Spider Totem himself. The Web Warriors then sent Spider Bots to monitor the Inheritors, but they were destroyed. Meanwhile, Superior Spider Man combined Genixes and the Jackass cloning technology to create clones where he could transfer his consciousness if his current body died. This development led Genix to use the technology of the Spider Bots to hack the cloning tubes and create new clone bodies. The Inheritors eventually cloned their father's body and retrieved the crystal containing his soul, restoring him to life. After many battles between the Inheritors and the Web Warriors, Miles Morales, empowered by the Enigma Force, killed Solus with the Sword Vigor. Sword Vigor is a weapon used by Earth 51778's Spider-Man, who is also known as... Spider-Man! The Spire people used the Jackal's cloning tubes to create new baby bodies for the rest of the Inheritors. The clones had no memory of their past, and the Spider people found out that Solus put the hunger in his children, and that this could be reversed if they were raised right. And that's why Spider-Man adopted the clones. And yes, Spider-Man is basically Aunt May if she had become Spider-Woman. However, after Spider-Link accidentally freed the Wasp Goddess Safra, she turned Spider-Man into Spider-Wasp, who ate all the baby inheritors except Morlun. Morlun never became a baby since he was defeated by Spider-Man in Earth 616 and stayed in that universe. There, a group of scientists imprisoned him and experimented on him, but he was able to break free and started living in the sewers, eating small spiders. After so many times that he was defeated by Spider-Man in Earth 616, it seemed that he was now afraid of him and never attacked him again. After he found out about the death of his siblings, Morlun attacked Sathra to take revenge, but she was too powerful and he had to become allies with the spiders to stop her. But this, my friends, is a story for another day. In this video, I mentioned quite a few stories featuring the Inheritors, and if you want to read some of them, then I'd recommend Amazing Spider-Man Coming Home, the first appearance of Morlun, Spider-Man the Other, Evolve or Die, the second appearance of Morlun, and Spider-Man's encounter with the Other, Spider-Verse, the Inheritors' Great Hunt, Spider-Geron, the Return of the Inheritors, Spider-Verse, Spider-Geron Omnibus, the collected edition that collects the main story and the tie-ins for these two Spider-Verse events. I only recommend this, however, if you also want to read all the tie-ins and not just the main story. Otherwise, you do not really need it. Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. Sather's attack and the death of all inheritors, uh, well, except Morlun. This story, however, isn't released in trade paperback format yet, but it will be released uh, in June 7th this year. Spider-Man The Darkest Hours. This one is not exactly canon, since it's a book and not a comic, but if you want, I guess you could check it out. Well guys, this was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and that now you know who the Inheritors are. If you found my video useful, you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button, and allowing all notifications. Until the next time, goodbye true believers! Wait a second, I think there were two more inheritors, Daurok and Namura. We've only seen them once though.
Well, I think that Marvel will use them again at some point so that they can resurrect the rest of the inheritors. And then we'll get another Spider-Verse event. <sighs> Here we go again.